Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we are going to do a static analysis on a 2D steel frame uh, as the one shown here. Uh, so this is a typical steel frame, uh, 10 meter in span, 5 meter in height with an inclined roof. And all the sections here are I-shaped sections. Uh, we are going to use this example to illustrate how to conduct section cuts and obtain section forces at different locations within your model. So let's go ahead into Abacus. So here I have Abacus open. So I'll go ahead and start by creating the part. So I click here. This I will call it frame. And I'm going to use 2D planner. So I'm not drawing things in the 3D model space. I'm going to use the 2D. And I'm going to draw things as wire elements. For the approximate size here, it doesn't matter. Uh, we can put, uh, we have the span of 10,000. So we can put perhaps 10,000 here. Simply continue. So let's start by drawing our frame. So I'm going to draw it as a series of lines. So I can start perhaps from here, negative 5,000 and zero. And I'm going all the way to 5,000 in height. And then the second point should be here at zero and 6,000 millimeter. So like this. So again, I'm using millimeter and newtons in as my units. And then I draw the rest of the frame. So that's it. So now I finished drawing the frame lines. So I click on done and that's it. I have my frame. So the next step, we go ahead to the property. Let's create the material. I'm going to call this steel elastic and that will be a regular elastic material. So just I'm going to define only the elastic branch, 200,000 megapascal for model elasticity and 0.3 for Poisson ratio. And that's it. And then I'm going to create the section. So here we have wire elements and we are going to assign those a beam section. So first we need to create a profile. So I'm going to click on create profile. I'm going to call it um, I section and the shape would be I. Then I'm going to click on continue. So here we have the section. So the section is 400 by 150 by 15 by 20. So let's add those dimensions. So H is 400 millimeter I well, this is the neutral axis. This would be at 200. It's a symmetric section. The thickness of the flange, uh, the width of the flange, sorry, would be 150 and 150. And then the thickness of each flange is 20 millimeter and the thickness of the web is 15 millimeter. I'm going to click on OK. So that's it. We defined our section. Then we need to create uh, sorry, we defined our profile, so then we need to create the section. So let's call this uh, our section as well. That's fine. So here, let's define this as a beam. The type is beam. Then we'll click on continue. And then it's already because we already defined our section, so it's already selected here. And the material, we have only one material, so also it's selected right here. So we can go ahead and click on OK. And then we need to assign this section to our beam elements. So we select over here all the beam elements, click on done, and that's it. One more step that we need to do when we define beam elements, we need to define the beam orientation because the eye section, for instance, in this case, could be rotated at any direction along the length of each member. So I'm going to click on that going to select on all members again, click on done. And this orientation actually, so this is for the N1 direction of the profile. So this would be fine as it is right now. So I'm going to click on done, okay. And if we want to visualize this to make sure that it's oriented correctly, we can go to view, part display options, render beam profile and we'll click on apply. So we can see the section here, perhaps if we go to the 3D view, so you can see the section is oriented as we want. So that's fine. 
So let's go again to the 2D view and then let's proceed with the rest of the steps. So let's go to the assembly, create the assembly, only this frame. So that's it, nothing else here. Then we go to the step, we are going to create a new step. We are going to call this loading step and this is a static analysis, typical uh, analysis uh, step. And then we go to continue. I'm going to put nonlinear geometry, that's fine. I'm going to keep the time period as one. The time is not relative here, uh, is not relevant, sorry, in the static analysis. Incrementation, I'm going to use a point 0.1 step, point 0.1 for maximum. So that would be fine. Okay, that's it for the step. Interaction, there are no interactions over here. Go directly to the load. Let's put the boundary condition. So let's say pinned supports. So this can be applied from the initial step, that's fine. Continue, so I'm going to select the two bases over here and I'm going to lock the displacement. All right, so these are pin supports. So you have the indication right here for the pin supports. And then I need to apply my load at the top of the frame. So let's create the load. You can call it just load, it's fine. Concentrated force that will be applied in the loading step. Continue, I'm going to select the top point. Done, and then this will be in the Y direction. So see F2 concentrated force in the two direction. And the value is, let's uh, remember the value over here. So the value is 40 kilonewton. So we put here negative 40 thousand newton and then okay so we have over here our force and uh, then for the meshing let's click on the mesh size let's first select the part so the mesh size we have everything here in meters so perhaps 500 millimeters so half a meter would be fine uh, we can click uh, apply then okay and then uh, we can mesh the part, so that's fine. And then we can go directly to the job. But before we go to the job, let's fix a little bit the field output request. So let's edit the field output request. We want to look at section forces later on. So let's look under forces and let's make sure that we select the SF field variable or the section forces and moments. So you will need that if we want to obtain section forces at different location along the frame. If we are modeling the same frame using solid elements or shell elements, in that case, we will also need to select uh, the N fork, so the nodal force uh, due to element stresses. So in, if we want to see section forces, if we are modeling things in shell uh, or solids, then we'll need that. But since I'm doing beam elements, wire elements, so I only need the section force right here. Then I click OK. Then we go to the job. We create the job. That's fine. We can make par parallelization here to make it um, faster. Then we submit the job. We open the monitor. It should be a fast uh, analysis. This is an elastic analysis, straightforward. So that's it, it's concluded, no problem. So let's look at the results. Let's look at the deformed shape. So here we can see the deformed shape, but perhaps the scale factor is a little bit uh, small. So let's modify this here. Uh, let's make it, okay. So now it's a little bit visible. We can see the deformation. We can play the animation to see it deforming. So that looks fine. So, now let's go ahead and to just to make it more visible. So let's go to the view, ODP display options, and let's render the beam profile. Let's do that. Uh, so here is how it looks. We can uh, perhaps make for over here for the contours, we can make it like continuous. So that looks a little bit better. So now let's look in the 3D view. Here we go. So now what we would like to see, we would like to see the moment, shear force, axial force at any locations within the frame. So how we can do that? 
we can do that from over here from this view cut manager so if we click on that we can create a cut uh, parallel to any of these planes so if we can select for instance the x plane so here we go we have a cut and we can actually use the slider to move this cutting plane at different locations as you see right here you can if you want to be more specific at the location of the plane you can specify the value of this offset value directly at this location at in this field sorry uh, if you want to try for instance a cut in the y plane so you can do the same here you go we're cutting in the y plane the z plane of course maybe it doesn't matter in this case because well we don't have anything in the z right so this is irrelevant in our 2d plane model so now we have let's say the x so here we go so this is the x plane you can click on this checkbox if you want to have the cut on the other direction so you can do these things if you want to cut and look from the left or cut and look from the right but we see the cut but we don't see any forces so how we can see the forces so actually in the fourth checkbox over here under this icon so this icon actually which also shows over here which says create free body cut so right from this dialog box if you check this one you will get these arrows by default so these arrows represent the resultant force and the resultant moment at the location of the cut and then if you move these forces the resultant forces and the resultant moment values will change let's first before we proceed let's fix some things because here you see that the font is in yellow perhaps so it doesn't show quite well so let's fix uh, this graphic thing so if we go to options if we go to free body and then if you go all the way down here to this free body plot options and then if you go to colors and styles well before color styles, let's go to labels first so the, the label color now for the force is yellow so let's modify this to black so that we can see it let's click on apply so now it's visible and actually let's change as well the format of the number to become like fixed i don't need to see any decimal points yes so this is better let's do the same for the moment so here we can see now the forces so what you are seeing here again the red one the red arrow this is the resultant arrow represent the resultant force at this section and the blue one that has two arrows if you see the blue one it has like two arrows on top of each other so this represent the resultant moment at this section but we are not very interested here on the resultant value we want to see the components so actually if you go to the general over here the general under general tab so by default the vector display it shows the resultant but we want to see the component so click on component and click on apply so now with we see two red arrows each arrow represent the force in each orthogonal uh, direction within the plane of the analysis and the blue one still the one representing the moment but uh, right now you are we are seeing these forces at this location if we look here in the plane of the analysis x y these forces are in the direction like these components are in the direction of my main axis my x y z axis the coordinates all right the main coordinates of my model so if you want perhaps we might be more interested to seeing these forces parallel to the section all right parallel to the plane of the section so i'll show you how we can do that but before we do that let's do another thing here with the visuals so we have the two arrows for the forces the shear force and the axial force are shown in red so we can modify that we can keep perhaps the shear force which is the second component in red perhaps we can make the axial force to have a green color just to differentiate so that looks much better uh, you can also modify many many things regarding the labels and the plots and how things looks like so feel free to do that so now we have the forces all this of course is in newton so that's okay so now 
All right, so now everything, as you see here, this component is shown, this component that we are seeing here, they are shown with respect to the default coordinate system that we are using here. But if I want, since I have this beam over here, the beam is inclined. So we want another to define another coordinate system so that we get our components parallel to this coordinate system. So we can go here and create we select this one and we create a new coordinate system so let's create a new coordinate system a rectangular coordinate system let's click on continue so the first thing abacus is asking you to select a point to be the origin so i'm going to select the point of zero 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 as it is that's fine and then you want to select a point to be on the x-axis so in this case we want this point to be a little bit more elevated so that it becomes parallel to this beam so this beam if you remember from the model script from the uh, problem description has a slope of one to five so if i'm moving one in the x direction so in the y direction i need to move vertically by point two so i click enter and then i need another point on the xy plane so any point would do and if i do that then you get your new coordinate system right here and actually if i look in the xy plane you see now that the coordinate system is actually parallel to the beam so if i go from here and then select this new coordinate system and i click on apply so notice here once i click on apply these components will be now resolved parallel and perpendicular to the section so if i do that so now here you go so now we can get the shear force parallel to the section of the beam and the axial force perpendicular on the section of the beam. Okay, so this is how you can rotate these components. Of course, if you are looking into the vertical element over here, we don't need to do that. We just need, we can use the default global coordinate axis. So that's it for this. So now we can move again. Let's go again in the 3D. So if you want to find what are the values at the corner. So here you go. So at the corner, you have this moment in Newton millimeter. So that's about 32 kilonewton meter. And the shear force is 18 kilonewton. And the axial force at the beam is about 11 kilonewton. Uh, let's say if we want to find the section forces in the vertical column. So in this case, we want to cut in the Y plane. But notice here, if I cut in the Y plane, and I need to select this as well to show the resultant forces. So if I do that, well, first let's modify because we're still on this inclined coordinate axis. So let's go to the options and let's select our default global axis. So that's fine. So if you do that, now we are cutting through these two columns. So that's why the coordinates here, we don't see well, pretty much negligible moment and we only see the axial force which is the 40 kilo newton acting on the two columns but we don't want to see that we want to see only and of course these components are in the middle of the structure because it's symmetric but we want to see this only in one of the columns so how we can do that well this we can do by just vi visualizing one of the two columns what you need to do you can go here into the create display group and if you click on that and then uh, if you select pick from viewport so we can select for instance this column over here and click on done and say replace so now we only see this column and since our cut is based on whatever we are visualizing inside this viewport inside this window so right away we only see the components on the column right here so as you see here the axial force in the column is 20 kilonewton, which makes sense because we are applying force out on the entire structure. This is the shear force. If you move all the way to the base, so pretty much these are the reactions. Those would be the reactions at the base of the column. All right, so this would be the values. And you can zoom out a little bit. Now, one last thing, uh, assume that here you want to extract this data like with respect to time so all you need to do while having this view cut manager active as it is right now i'll just close this window 
and you go to your typical create XY data. And from the list over here, you just need to choose free body and then you say continue. And then you just want to select what you want to save. So if I want to save, for instance, the force and the moments, component one and component two, something like that, then you can click on plot directly, or let me just, just look at the forces, component one and component two, the axial force and the shear force. And if I click on plot, so you can see this data, how it varies with time. So while you're applying incrementally your 40 kilonewton at the top, this is what happens until you apply it totally at the end. This is the variation of the uh, values. So this is how can you extract the data. And of course you can click on save and later on you can use the plugin tools, Excel utilities to extract the XY data to Excel. So now visualize everything. So I hope that you found this tutorial useful. So this is pretty much how you can visualize the section forces at any location within your model, even if you have inclined surfaces. The same thing applies if you are modeling this using solid elements or shell elements, but the only difference is that you need to select before you run the analysis that you want to work with nodal forces instead of section forces, but the same options here are used to visualize the components at any section. So thank you and we'll see you in the next tutorial.